The Dolphins selected quarterback Tua Tungavailoa in 2020, and with not needing to take a quarterback, Edwards has them taking the generational offensive line prospect. Even after grabbing three offensive linemen in the 2020 draft, the Dolphins can't pass on Sewell here. Sewell is NFL number two overall prospect on the draft board, but with the Jaguars expected to take number one overall prospect Trevor Lawrence and the Jets expected to take a quarterback, Edwards feels that the Dolphins need to take Sewell at number three. Sewell has long been expected to be a top overall pick in the upcoming 2021 NFL draft. Sewell's draft stock has been soaring after a stellar sophomore season in which the lineman became the first true sophomore to take home the Outland Trophy on the offensive line. In 2019, Sewell became the third unanimous All-American in Oregon Ducks program history, taking home just about every honor he was eligible for and even received multiple Heisman votes. The lineman has appeared in almost every major 2021 NFL mock draft inside the top five. It seems like everybody who works anywhere that has anything to do with college or professional football has raved about the talents of Sewell, who last month elected to opt out of the 2020 college season even before a partial season became a reality. The fact that Sewell could get away with not playing any games his junior season but still be assured of being a high-end first-round selection is a testament to his talents and potential. And it's not hyperbole. Sewell stands out in a crowd. At 6 foot 6, 330 pounds, he is a massive presence but is svelte for his size. There isn't much wasted poundage. In that body, Sewell packs uncommon athleticism. If he were 50 pounds lighter, Sewell could play defensive end. Take away 70 pounds and he'd be a pretty darn good tight end. Sewell is simply a rare player. Oregon has had a handful of such players over the past 20 years, most notably, defensive tackle Haloti Nada, 12th pick, 2006, Baltimore, running back Jonathan Stewart, 13th, 2008, Carolina, Long, 20th, 2013, Chicago, and defensive ends Eric Armstead, 17th, 2015, San Francisco, and DeForest Buckner, 7th, 2016, San Francisco. Armstead is 6 to 7, 290. Buckner is 6 to 7, 300. Nada, now retired and a potential Hall of Famer, played defensive tackle at 6-4, 340 but moved like a defensive end. Stewart, also retired, played at 5-10, 235 and had roughly the size of Royce Freeman, 6-0, 238, with the same 40 time, 4.48 seconds, as LaMichelle James, who played at 5-9, 190. Kyle Long played at 6 to 6, 332 and was as athletic as some of the tight ends in the NFL, the scouts said. Had Long, who played only one year at Oregon, entered the NFL with more experience, he might have developed into a left tackle, the scout said. Athleticism is close to that of Long, and he's on the verge of developing the overall skills of Gary Zimmerman, the former Ducks lineman who is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame and should be regarded as the best UO has ever produced at his position. Sewell, Oregon's first-ever Outland Trophy winner in 2019, could ultimately challenge Zimmerman for that distinction. Athleticism and tenacity. Sewell's physical gifts allow him to do unique things at an elite level. Elite left tackles are as rare as elite quarterbacks. Human beings large and strong enough to block pass rushers while also athletic enough to move well in space are rare. Schwartz, UO, 2004-07, played in the NFL at a listed size of 6-6, 332. He had the size. Tyler Johnston excelled at left tackle for Oregon for three seasons and was named first-team All-Pac-12 in 2015 before spending a year with the San Diego Chargers and then playing two seasons with the Montreal Alouettes of the CFL. He, he played his senior year at about 305 and relied mostly on quickness and guile. For both, watching Sewell in action is like viewing an alien life form. What I see out there is just an athletic, huge man that shouldn't be as athletic as he is, Johnston said. He doesn't move like the way he's built. He's a big freak of nature in that sense. Mastering the kick step, for instance, took time for both Schwartz and Johnston. Executing it over and over was a chore. Watching Sewell do it with greater ease and quickness, it's something for them to behold. I know I was pretty good for my time, but this kid is ridiculous, Johnston said. Football IQ. Left tackles must be uber smart because defenses throw all sorts of schemes at them to force mistakes that lead to sacks. Sewell, however, appears to take as much pride in his mental preparation as he does his physical preparation.
It's a fine balance between being cerebral and understanding the play and understanding the concept and your place in it and the presence of mind to be a physical specimen and a savage beast all at once, Long said. And that's what you get with Penny Sewell. Schwartz said the great lineman he's played with and talked to, such as his brother, Kansas City right tackle Mitchell Schwartz, and the retired Joe Thomas, process information at an amazing rate, allowing them to diagnose the situation and not get beaten mentally. I see the same stuff as them, but I couldn't execute what I want to do like they could, said Schwartz, who spent six seasons in the NFL, 2008-15. I feel like Penne is in the category where he can just see something and just do what he wants to do. Other than injuries, about the only thing that could trip up Sewell's career would be complacency that leads to not spending as much time in the playbook and watching game video as he should. He can't get complacent and he can't rest on his laurels, Long said. That's one thing that a guy like that is going to have to watch out for is having so much damn talent. None of the former UO offensive linemen believe that Sewell will become lazy at the next level. Schwartz said that the Oregon coaching staff has raved to him about Sewell's work ethic and how he seeks out information that will help him become better. He also practices as if he isn't a lock first round pick. He wants to be great, Schwartz said. Sewell certainly has room to grow. He turned 20 on Friday and has played only a season and a half, given that he missed six games his freshman season. His ceiling is so much higher than maybe a guy that has played four years, Schwartz said. One area where Schwartz wanted to see more from Sewell was pass protection. Oregon ran, Oregon ran a lot of quick passes in 2019. New offensive coordinator Joe Moorhead is expected to call more downfield passes this season that would have given Sewell more work protecting the quarterback in a true pocket. The NFL scout interviewed had hoped to see the same. He said he expected that Sewell would have had a target on his back this season, prompting every pass rusher on the schedule to go after him with extra vigor. He was going to get challenged, so you kind of missed out on seeing that, the scout said. Sewell also didn't face a ton of great pass rushers last year. Playing another season would have provided more evidence of his greatness. I don't think it helps not playing, the scout said. He's still a young player. So, he's only got two years starting. But in the end, that probably won't matter. According to the scout, Sewell is the best left tackle he has scouted coming out of the West Coast since UCLA's Jonathan Ogden, who went fourth overall to Baltimore in the 1996 NFL Draft. The scout said that when he scouted the future 11-time Pro Bowler now in the Hall of Fame, he remembers writing, none, under his heading for, weaknesses. He didn't make mistakes, the scout said. Penne doesn't really, either. He would be right up there. The scout did have one nitpick about Sewell. He said he would like to see a little more fire out of Sewell on the field but noted that his calm demeanor is not a detriment given that he does play with fury. Maybe because he's so talented, he looks like he is in cruise control. Patient, calm, the scout said. But that may be him. I can't knock him for not playing with a little more energy. At the end of the day, a lack of extensive video evidence when it comes to Sewell is largely immaterial, the scout said. You're getting Penne Sewell because he's a good athlete and he's 330, he said. Just because of that mass and he's got the mobility. Sewell is indeed the entire package. He's a monster, but add to it his technique and love for the game, it's going to be a great thing to watch and I'm just happy if he is a dolphin so I can brag on him.